Yo, so quick disclaimer, in this video for the first couple questions, when I draw my supply and demand curve, I call the supply curve quantity supplied, and I call the demand curve quantity demanded. That is a huge no-no. Just be wary of that mistake I made. Um, Yeah, and enjoy the video. Alright guys, so today we're going to go through AP Microeconomics FRQ. This one is aligned with Unit 3, Production Costs, Perfect Competition. And I am going to go kind of slow through it um and that's because i'm self-studying the exam and so i'm really making the video for myself and just so i understand the topics and stuff so we can skip ahead for the solution um but yeah let's just get right into the question so it says corn is used as food and as an input in the production of ethanol like alternative fuel assume corn is produced in a perfectly competitive market wow uh, so A says draw a correctly labeled side-by-side -side graph for the corn market and a representative corn farmer on your graph show the equilibrium price and quantity of the corn market, profit maximizing quantity of the corn produced by the representative farmer, earning zero economic profit labeled QF. Okay, cool. So let's draw our graphs. So whenever you have a perfectly competitive market, you're going to draw two graphs usually when you're asked. You're going to draw the, the graph for the market and then you're going to draw the graph for the firm. So let's first draw the graph for the market. So we're just going to have our graph here on the y-axis. We're going to have our price. I'm not going to write the full thing out because I'm using a mouse, but just imagine that's price and that's quantity. And then our graph is going to be up, upward sloping, quantity supplied, downward sloping, quantity demanded. Intersection between those two points is your equilibrium price and quantity. And so we can just label this with dotted lines. So it wants us to label the equilibrium price quantity, PM and QM. Well, there is our equilibrium price and there is our equilibrium quantity. Boom. I probably should have labeled this like corn market or something. And this is our firm. Doesn't really matter. That's cool. But now we got to draw the other graph. Okay. So our other graph is the graph for our firm. So here we have our little graph. That's price. That's quantity. So the first thing I'm going to label is marginal cost. Usually you can think about marginal cost as a Nike swoosh like this, right? So initially it's going to decrease because if you think about it, your uh, fixed costs, like your rent or your utilities, you can use those more and those are more dedicated towards producing each unit, right? It's economies of scale. But eventually because of the law of diminishing returns, then your uh marginal cost is going to increase from there. So we're going to draw in our marginal cost curve. It's going to go like this. Boom. Call that marginal cost. And then the next one I want to draw in for our graph for our firm is going to be our average total cost. So the thing with the average total cost, the trick is it's basically like a upside down U or parabola. And it's going to go down, down, down. And then when it hits MC, the marginal cost, it's going to start going back up. And that is our average total cost. Because if you think about it, the average total cost factors in both the fixed cost and the total cost. And so if you think about it, if your marginal cost is below your average total cost, it's pulling the average total cost down. That's why it's going down. But when they intersect and eventually MC is greater than the average total cost, then the average total cost must be going up if the marginal cost is going up as well. So there we have that. And it wants us to uh, label the profit maximizing quantity of corn produced by the resident farmer earning zero economic profit. Okay, so zero economic profit is a very important thing. So economic profit, what exactly is that? So economic profit basically covers both your explicit and your implicit costs. So like explicit stuff like actually the materials and stuff that you use to produce the goods and also your opportunity cost, right? That's like your implicit costs. So that's good, obviously. So in our firm here, in order to produce at the zero economic profit, that's where your marginal revenue intersects with the marginal cost. That intersection point has to be equal to an intersection with the average total cost. So what this looks like on the curve is, well, first we should determine where our marginal revenue is, and that's going to be determined Remember, our firm here in a perfectly competitive market is a price taker, okay? They don't make the price. They don't determine the price. They just go with the, the flow of the market because it's a perfectly competitive firm because they don't have that, you know, 
that much power. There's tons of other small firms that you can buy from. And so our marginal revenue is going to be equal to our demand, right? You can't charge more than the market uh, wants. So here we have, this should really be a dotted line. I'm just going to draw this over. That was horrible. I'm going to draw this over and it has to pretend that intersects with the marginal average total cost. Right there, we're going to call that marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is also going to be our demand here. If it'll let me right equals demand. Okay, cool. So now we've found our point because where do you produce to maximize profit or maximize revenue in our case? Well, to maximize revenue, you're going to produce where MR equals MC. Obviously, if you produce any more than that, then your cost will outweigh your revenue that you get. So there's no point in producing. If you produce less than that, then you're missing out on potential revenue that you could get. Uh, because your costs are less than your marginal revenue. Uh, so that honestly is kind of like common sense. So that intersection point, that is where we will produce. Okay. And so that is the point we picked because we want zero economic profit, right? And so in our case, this is indeed zero economic profit because where will we produce? Well, this is the profit maximizing quantity right here. It wants us to label as QF. Boom, that's QF. And so if you wanted to calculate our revenue, that would just be this box right here. So that's our revenue, right? And then our cost, that is where you have to look at the intersection with the average total cost curve. What would you look at that? That is at the exact same point as our marginal revenue, all right? And so because of that, that means our average total cost is also the same box. And so we make zero economic profit. All right, cool. Let's move on to part B. B says, assume the demand for ethanol increases on your graphs in part A. Show what happens to each of the following in the short run. It says the market price and quantity of corn. Uh, okay, wait, I read that wrong. Assume the demand for ethanol increases. Okay, so that's the first part. We got to figure it out because it's not, it doesn't seem like it's directly tied in the corn, but it is. Okay, because it says up here, it says corn is used as food and an input in the production of ethanol. So corn is used to produce ethanol. So therefore, if the demand of ethanol, I'm just gonna write E as ethanol because I'm too lazy to write out the whole thing. If the demand for ethanol increases, right, that theoretically should also translate to an increase in demand, uh, demand for our corn, right? Therefore, on our market graph here, we're going to be increasing or shifting, actually shifting the entire demand curve in our case. And so we're going to be increasing that demand curve. And so we're going to shift this right. And so now our new quantity demanded will be this right here. Let's call that quantity demanded one. And so now we have a new equilibrium point with our quantity supplied. And that in turn, this is quite messy, that in turn creates a new equilibrium price and quantity and wants us to label it p star and q star so we'll do just that p star that doesn't even look like a p q star bang that's cool all right it says the area of the profit or loss earned by the representative corn farmer shaded completely okay i'm not gonna be able to shade it completely because i'm using like pens and stuff um but anyways this is kind of bad down here this blue part so I am going to do an eraser and hopefully I can just erase. Oh crap. Never mind. Never mind. We're just going to keep that. Just ignore that because that, that's kind of an eyesore. But what will happen to our marginal revenue, which remember is aligned with our demand curve, right? Because our entire graph on the uh, market side shifted upwards, right? So now we have a new uh, quantity, dem uh, quantity demanded and price right so our new demand is going to be up here and that is going to bang boom intersect right there so that is going to be our marginal revenue i don't know let's call this one equals demand one cool and so now remember always produce where mr equals mc and so this right here this point right here is actually where we're going to produce and so if you go down you can see our uh quantity that we're going to produce to maximize revenue and so this right here what does it want us to label 
Oh, it doesn't want us to label. It just wants us to find the area of the profit or loss. Okay, so this is our, I don't know, I'm still going to label this like quantity F1, whatever. Um, so now we need, just need to figure out what our profit is because this is going to be a profit because the intersection of MC and MR is above the intersection uh, with the average total cost curve. Okay, so if we look at the average total cost curve to determine uh, how much we're actually going to spend average total cost, we're going to right here, you can see the intersection right there with our quantity that we're going to produce. And so here is going to be the entire box right there with that red. And then let me change to, I guess, pink. So this in pink, right, everything down here in pink, that represents our total cost. Okay, because we have our average total cost as a value right here. We have the amount we're producing, the quantity, and so if you multiply the two, that big box is the total cost. But what trumps that is our revenue. That's why we're making a profit, all right? So you can see our marginal cost is equal to our marginal revenue, and that's the revenue uh, maximizing point. And so our marginal revenue, that's the additional revenue we get from each product. That is a value right there at that point. And so when we look down, same thing with the average total cost and the quantity that we're uh, supplying or producing. You can see here, all we need to do is shade in this big box. And all that is what? Well, all that is our revenue, okay? So ultimately, and on the actual question, you probably shouldn't shade in both of these. You should probably only shade in this top part, which is gonna be our revenue. So let's write it in nicely, revenue. All right, cool. So I'm at 11 minutes and I got through two questions. Wow, this is crazy, man. This is such a slow video, but whatever. All right, let's move on to the next part of the question. It says, relative to your answer in part B, state what will happen to the market equilibrium price and quantity of corn in the long run. Okay, so what will happen in the long run? Uh, so if we look at this right now in our firm, our boy is making a profit, okay? And if other corn farmers see this guy's making a profit, they're like, you know what? I'm also going to join, you know, I'm also going to join the market to sell corn and make profit. Okay. So what that ultimately does is increases our quantity supply. So I'm just going to draw, you see this graph right here. I'm just going to draw over here. Just so it's like less messy. So currently this is our quantity supplied and this is like our quantity demanded, right? I don't know. This is a bad representation, but I just want you to like see the thoughts. And so our quantity supplied is going to increase, right? So this is the original and then our quantity supplied, bang, shifts to the right, increases. And so now we can see exactly what happens because the question is asking what will happen to the market equilibrium and quantity. Well, it's right here, brother, the market equilibrium and quantity. So we can see that originally, oh, this is so bad. So this is our original price and this is our original quantity. So we can see that our equilibrium price decreased okay so our equilibrium price decreased and our equilibrium uh quantity let's label q1 i don't know increased so bang I just erased everything because if you couldn't tell already it was a huge mess but we're gonna go on and answer our last two questions it says soybeans are produced in a perfectly competitive market that's cool I uh, assume farmers can grow either corn or soybeans on the same land. What happens to the price of soybeans in the next planting season if the price of corn increases? Explain. Okay, so this is a pretty simple question. It says farmers can grow either corn, corn or soybeans. That means corn and soybeans are substitutes, right? They can use either one. So if the price of corn goes up, that means people will want to buy soybeans, right? Because it's cheaper and you can you can use either one on your land, right? So obviously you can go with the cheaper thing. And so if people are going to buy more soybeans, that means the demand curve for soybeans will also increase. So what happens to the price? Well, we're just going to have to find out by drawing our graph. So this is a not a very accurate graph. So our quantity, oh, not our quantity, our price, our quantity, all right? So let's draw our supply and demand. So let's just say this is like soybeans or something. I'm just gonna write soy because I don't write, write soybeans. This is our original equilibrium point, right? And we have our quantity 
in our price. So let's just label this supply and this is demand. So if people buy more soybeans or they want to buy more soybeans because the price of corn just went up, that means the demand curve will shift to the right to increase demand. And now we have a new equilibrium point right here. So this new equilibrium point shows us what happens to the quantity and the price. The question asks what happens to the price of soybeans in the next planting season. We can see here the price increased. All right. It says explain. I mean, I'll just explain by drawing this graph and also explain that, you know, they are substitutes, right? So if price of corn goes up, that means people buy more soybeans equals demand soybeans go up equals price go up. Bang. E. Assume instead that the government sets a binding price ceiling in the corn market. Draw a new correctly labeled graph for the corn market and show each of the following binding price ceiling and quantity purchased by the customers. Okay, cool. Let's draw our market graph. Let's just call this corn. All right. We got our price. We got our quantity. And then we're going to have our upward sloping. No, I, was about, I was about to write quantity supply, man. Supply. And our downward sloping demand. Okay, cool. So this is our equilibrium point. All right. But our government sets a binding price ceiling. What is a binding price ceiling? Okay. So a price ceiling is like you cannot charge customers more than a certain price. Right. Now, if we put it like, I don't know, up here. Right. So let's say our equilibrium price was like $5. And you say you cannot charge people more than $10. That's not a binding price ceiling because that doesn't mean anything, right? In the market, people are going to buy and exchange goods at $5 for corn, not $10. So that $10 price ceiling has no effect. But a binding price ceiling has to be below the equilibrium point, right? So it's going to be down here. So there's no values here, but this is just the price ceiling. The government says you cannot sell more than this, and it's below the equilibrium point. And so it actually has effect in the corn market. So we need to label our binding price ceiling as PC, so bang. And the last question of this FRQ says, label the quantity purchased by consumers in the corn market labeled QP. Okay, cool. So your first initial reaction might be to look at the demand curve and say, yo, they produce right here, right? This must be the, this must be the quantity. But no, because the suppliers are like, you know, we're getting a lot less here, right? The price literally went down. And so they're not going to produce as much. And so that is not the quantity that consumers are going to purchase. They would love to purchase that amount, but that amount is not available to be purchased. That amount available to be purchased is determined by the suppliers, which is right here, right? This is the amount that the suppliers will produce. This is the quantity. And so the amount that the consumers, sorry, the amount that the suppliers will make at this point is the amount that the consumers will buy. And that is QP. So that does it for the entire FRQ. If you guys learned something, make sure you subscribe for more FRQs and AP micro and macro content coming soon.